Hello, it is me. So as you guys know, Bones and I RP quite a bit. We've done several videos about our characters and some of the stories we've roleplayed, and honestly, some of our comics are based off RPs that we started and then turned into comics. Those comics being Sovereign and Pretty Mouth. So, on our Discord, Just Unique asked us about some tips on making your first RP. So here we go! Here are some tips from lots of fun RPs that Bones and I have done. Also, just a heads up, uh, by RP, uh, I'm talking about written RPs, so kind of collaborative story building, uh, as opposed to, say, like, a tabletop game like D&D. Though I'm sure a lot of these rules could apply to a tabletop, but anyways. So the way Bones and I often start one of our RPs is that one of us, typically Bones, will come up with a cool pitch to give to the other person. Um, so some examples of pitches we've done, and pitches can be like any kind of story that excites you. You know, if you and your partner are like fantasy nerds or like you love cheesy contemporary romance, like whatever, whatever floats your boat. Doesn't have to mimic our pitches exactly, but some examples of pitches we've done that have turned into successful role plays. Uh, one was 1950s setting with math magic. Um, another one was a dad gets kidnapped by a fairy lady. And another one that was super successful <laughs> with us was a uh, space wizard government. So yeah, so come up with an exciting idea that you kind of want to base your RP off of. Sometimes it, for us it does start as like characters, um, but for the most part it will usually be like an interesting world or an interesting um, kind of story hook that'll get us into it. But it's usually where we start and once we have that we kind of build the world around it. So Bones typically takes the role of developing the world and kind of running the main plot. He's, I guess he's like the GM or DM, um, though it's, I also have a bit of say into plot threads and story ideas, uh, but typically Bones will create kind of a plot around, um, the world, or he'll have something in mind usually when he pitches something, but he'll usually build a story kind of around his characters, um, maybe some villains he's bringing in, but he's typically in charge of, like, coming up with the main plot. Um, so typically his characters are, like I said, they're villains, um, or they can be a character who's really intrinsic to the plot. Um, for example, uh, for our space wizard government RP, I also call that one, like, the alien kids. That one, his, one of his first characters was, um, a guy who is a space dragon, though he didn't know he was a space dragon. Um, so yeah, so that kind of thing where it's like, he's this character who's tied in with the main plot that my characters are going to discover as we go through this thing. Meanwhile, my characters play more of the protagonist type. A lot of the time they are like a Watson type character. So someone who is there to ask a lot of questions. They're new to maybe the fantasy world that they're in or new to the situation. And they're usually asking lots of questions and investigating things and kind of get spoon fed a lot of the information. Okay, maybe not spoon fed, but you know, you know what I'm talking about? They're like the, the fish out of water in this fantasy world. So like I said, uh, we do... When we start an RP, we discuss a lot about kind of the plot we want to do. Um, and by plot, it's usually like building what the world looks like and what our characters are all about, like what their background is maybe, or what's like a cool thing I want my character to do. So, for example, um, with the, like the Space Kids RP, Bones was like, hey, there's this system of planets, and they're all governed by the space wizard government, um, but it's like whole diverse systems of planets. So that gave me lots of things to play with. Any kind of sci-fi concept I could think of that I liked, I could base a planet off that and bring characters in from that planet. Um, so we do discuss kind of what we want. It's not just Bones building everything. Um, Though usually I'll say something like, I want my character to be, like, secretly royalty or something. And he'll go and kind of entwine that into the main plot so that, you know, maybe eventually he'll be the, the villainous king who is related to my character or something like that. 
and kind of bring them into his plans that he already has. So it's really important that you and your RP partner or partners kind of work together to entwine your plans for things. And don't shoot down your your friends' ideas or your partner's ideas because it can, it can be really fun to kind of mix different ideas together and you can get some really cool uh, story happenings that are really fun and really change things than, you know, if you were just writing a book by yourself. Um, that's kind of the fun part about RPing is, you know, your partner's always throwing you cool new bits and bobs for you to play with. So yeah, so that's kind of how we build fantasy stories. It usually focuses around kind of our characters, what they're doing, cool elements we want to bring in. Uh, if we're doing anything that's like not fantasy, so like a contemporary story um, that's usually very like character focused or character driven. Focus more on like drama and the internal workings of stuff more than like big fantasy elements. Usually there we start with characters. So Bones will be like, I want to do like a modern RP and this is my character. And I'll be like, cool, I have an idea for this kind of character. And then all the parameters we kind of set up are like, a meet cute. We figure out a way for them to meet, and then they just kind of go and build off of that. Whereas when we're working on something like a fantasy, we do spend a lot more time kind of discussing what we want the setting to be like. So like I said, characters are really where we start with everything. So when you're building your characters, it's important to remember that the first character you start off with might not be the one that you stick with throughout the RP. I find usually we'll jump into an RP with like this pitch or concept or world and then I'll be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna have this character. And then I write them for like a couple posts and I'm like, I don't like this character. <laughs> They're not really interesting and they don't mesh well with Bones' character. So a way to remedy that Sometimes my character needs to change, and honestly, Bones and I will reboot things if um, things aren't meshing, and we'll be like, okay, so now we have an idea of, like, what the world's like, what our characters are like, let's fix them so that they kind of link together better and have better chemistry. Um, and sometimes we might just add new characters when one gets boring or isn't going anywhere. Um, many of our RPs, the characters that we remember most and love the most, were maybe the second or third kind of set of characters we brought in. It happens a lot when we're trying to create like a, a ship, like characters in a relationship. Um, sometimes the first two characters who interact don't get along, but then we bring in another character and they click and they make a good couple. <laughs> it's, you know, um, sometimes you just got to try it and play around before committing to anything. Um, and don't get disheartened if it doesn't work right away, because sometimes, you know, sometimes you got to change things to make the story flow. <laughs> My advice for when you are making characters, it's really great if at least one of you has a character who's really nosy or pushy. Um, I find this often falls on me because Bones usually sets up like a mystery or a cool thing to follow. Um, and I usually need a character who's willing to kind of chase plot threads and make sure that we get to the cool stuff that Bones is setting up. Um, it's like, it's like your protagonist. Your protagonist needs motivation. They need to push through things and make plot happen. <laughs> they can't just sit around and do nothing because then Nothing's going to happen in your story and you're probably going to get bored. So what helps with me is at least for my first character in an RP, I usually make them super pushy and I make them follow Bones's character no matter what. Um, and it can be hard to come up with a reason for them to do that depending on like your character's situation or story. Sometimes it really helps to have characters already have a relationship. So sometimes we might have two characters come in and they're already dating. So there's a reason why my character would push to help Bones's character because they love each other. Um, one of my favorite characters who started out as just being really pushy and nosy for no real reason was Henry from the Space Kids RP. We have a video about him somewhere, where he is a character who is very pushy and obnoxious because he likes getting attention, especially from boys he has a crush on. And I also wanted him to be interested in, like, journalism and investigation stuff. So then when aliens and magic started popping up, he was like, I'm going to pursue this. What the heck is going on? He <laughs> um, so I built a character who would really pursue characters, even if they didn't want to talk to him. He would still push to interact with them. And um, he also had a reason to follow 
interesting plot threads. But yeah, sometimes you really need to lean in to a character being pushy or weird or rude and kind of figure out a reason for it. Um, but it can be really fun. I've made lots of characters who I probably wouldn't have made otherwise. Okay. So once you have your characters down, once you have your world down, and honestly, the characters in the world will change as you RP, and when it's an RP, it's totally okay to restart things and to change things on the fly if something's not working. It's not like if you're writing a book and you change something and then it breaks your whole book. RPs are a bit more free-flowing and meandering, and it's totally okay to change things around. So you now, once you have all that down, there are a few different ways that Bones and I will... RP. There's different styles we use, and I find they are really good for different reasons. Like, they, they help with different situations. So the main way we RP together is writing out paragraphs. Um, so we usually call this, like, paragraph style. <laughs> so this, this was how we started because when we were younger, the way you'd RP with people was, like, on online forums where you might have to wait, like, a day or two before you're friend replies. Um, so you would write out like a big paragraph describing like what your character is doing, how they're reacting to the situation, throwing in new information, and then the other person replies with another paragraph. So the reason this can really work, especially at the beginning of your RP, um, is because it gives you lots of room to like explain the world and describe your character and describe what they're thinking and feeling. Um, and it can really help your partner come up with ideas and understand your character. And it can help kind of set up mood and your world and stuff. It feels a little bit like writing a book together. It's fun. I know there's a rule floating around with a lot of our peers that you have to like match the length and detail that your partner writes. So if your partner writes like a big long paragraph, you're supposed to match it. Like you can't just answer that with like one sentence. However, Bones and I, we've been RPing for so long that that's totally okay. Sometimes when we're paragraph RPing, it'll be like one to two sentences, and sometimes it'll be like a longer paragraph. I find because now we RP mostly on like Discord and um, like instant messengers, uh, the shorter the paragraphs, the better, because we can get more of them out more quickly. We don't get stuck, you know, trying to match the length of the paragraph um, and throwing in like useless information that doesn't help anything. Um, so we usually do small paragraphs, just describe like a single action and it can really keep the pace going. Um, kind of the first couple replies are really long as we get into things and then they get shorter as we kind of dive into the story and want things to go faster paced. So yeah, there we go. So that's paragraph style. The second style of RPing that we do, um, it's kind of like a chat log or dialogue tags in a script. So that's where you type as your character. You might put their name and then list what their dialogue is, kind of as if your characters were talking on an instant messenger. But when we do that kind of chat log style of RPing, um, it's great for when we want to focus just on dialogue. Um, sometimes there's like a little bit of action thrown in, like, I don't know, high-fiving characters high-fiving or something, or like, they walked over here or something like that. But it's really short, and it's mostly focused on what they're saying to each other. This is great for getting through big talks between characters really quickly. Um, we use it a lot for building relationships between characters when they're just kind of hanging out. Maybe we have characters who are getting to know each other, and we don't want to spend extra time writing out, I don't know, background stuff that isn't as important to us as the characters bonding and becoming friends or something. So yeah, so that's great for focusing on dialogue. It also gets it going really quickly. Um, so if you're ever stuck at an RP, sometimes we will jump around between different formats. So if you're really stuck and you need to kind of work through characters talking about something, it can really help to switch from paragraphs to this. Um, and it's really fun and it's really quick. And finally, the last kind of style of RPing we do is super nerdy. <laughs> so sometimes we will speak out loud as if we are our characters. Now, this started when we were teens and we had no money and we would just go for long meandering walks around town and we just chat. And so, you know, we wouldn't have our computers, we wouldn't have phones or a notebook where we could pass the RP back and forth to each other, so we just talk as if we are our characters having a conversation. Now, obviously, we wouldn't do anything like 
going off and acting out the characters, fighting monsters or anything. It's not like LARPing, but we would just speak as the character. It was another strategy of like getting through um, places in the RP where we felt really stuck. Sometimes like when something big and plot heavy would happen, it was really helpful to just like speak as the characters or talk through a situation instead of trying to sit down and write it all out. Um, Because sometimes when you're writing like you know, the big villain reveal, or, like, the bin point of the story where everything's going terribly, like, and everything changes. It was really helpful to kind of speak as the characters and get that kind of, like, instant reaction of what's going on. We also used to do it because we used to do, like, a tabletop role-playing group where a lot of it was, like, you know, what you do when you're playing D&D and you, like, speak as your character and stuff. So that's also really helpful when you're, like, RPing with, like, a bunch of people so that you're not all waiting for replies. You can all just speak as your characters. Um, so yeah, give that a try if you never have. It's super nerdy, <laughs> but it's also kind of fun. Okay, so finally, looking at your RP stuff. It's really important to remember that RPing is a form of improv. Um, so one of the rules of improv, doing comedy or acting or whatever it is, uh, is always saying yes. So you in, in improv, you always want to say yes and or no but. You want to do everything in your power to keep the skit going. If you say no and refuse to engage with anything your partner is throwing at you, it's going to get frustrating. Your story is going to fizzle out. And it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> so, you know, you can't have your partner go, okay, there's a dragon attacking your town. What are you going to do? You can't just sit there and go like, oh, I'll just sit and wait to die. Like... <laughs> That's that's not going to make for an interesting RP. Your character has to go fight the dragon, go run away, go get help. Just do something that engages with what your partner is giving you. Because you don't want to get frustrated at each other for doing nothing or <laughs> refusing to engage with cool things that your partner is excited about. Um, so always remember to do that. Always say yes. And if you have to say no, give something else in return. Um, and the more you RP together, the easier it will be to kind of understand what the other person, like what kind of stories they're into, what kind of characters they like, what kind of events are fun for both of you. And I guess don't do anything you're uncomfortable with. If someone is like throwing you a plot that you really hate or makes you uncomfortable, just tell them that you're not comfortable with it. Just be straight up and communicate with each other. Yeah. So I guess finally, the key to really fun RPs, at least with me and Bones. It's good to remember that fluff, so fluffy stuff, so kind of like, there can be plot in fluffy stuff, but fluffy RPs can be very boring. At least Bones and I have found that F through like RPing with other people and like RPs we've done together. Like fluffy stuff is fun. Sometimes you need to do it um, just because it's like, it's easy, it's fun. It's a great way to build character relationships. In fact, that's how Bones and I use fluffy stuff in our RPs is just building relationships between characters. Um, but fluffy stuff can get boring if that's all you do. Um, but it's also important to remember that doing plot heavy stuff where like lots of events are happening and lots of changes happening to your characters, it is really fun and it's very exciting, but it can be really hard and draining as well. Um, I find Bones and I when things get really plot heavy, sometimes we will drop the RP because it can just be really taxing creatively to um, work on. And sometimes we need a break and sometimes we come back to the RP um, and finish things or sometimes we reboot it because we realize we're going in a direction that we don't like. Um, but yeah, plot heavy stuff can be tough to do. It can be tiring. But yeah, I think it's a good to do a balance of fluffy stuff and plot heavy stuff. I think that's the nice thing about RPing is that it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be stuck to a strict story structure and it can be a great way to explore character and to explore your world is just doing fluffy stuff. Um, that's some of the funnest stuff Bones and I have done RPing. Um, going back to like the alien kid RP, some of the funnest stuff was um, writing our alien characters interacting with our human characters and talking about the differences between their planets and cultures was really fun. So for example, we had two characters, Brad and Daph, and Brad was like an athletic college kid from uh, 
from Earth, and Daph was um, a really tough alien lady who came from a planet where um, it's very common for people to fight to the death, and it's a it's a planet where you have to be really tough and um, only look out for yourself, and feelings are weak, considered weak, and stuff like that. So whenever they would talk and he'd try to, like, make her open up and talk about her feelings and just be vulnerable, and she would make fun of him for, I don't know, liking frozen yogurt or something. Um, so just those culture clash things were really fun, um, just ta- characters talking and hanging out and showing the aliens human customs, like, I don't know, Christmas or something. <laughs> um, so there you go. So that is so that is some of the funnest stuff we've done. Um, but we've also had a lot of fun doing really plot-heavy stuff where characters are being murdered and um, the whole world is ending and stuff like that. So you gotta balance it. If you ever find yourself working together and stuff starts to get really boring, um, just be mean to your characters <laughs> um, and and challenge their flaws. Um, so, for example, uh, going back to the Daff and Brad stuff, um, so they were characters who kind of got involved romantically. Um, and so as they got closer and Brad started getting her to open up about her feelings, Daff started to... It started to challenge her, so instead of letting her, like, conceal her feelings and just act tough through everything and, um, I, like, open up to him, she just pushed him away. Um, and so Bones was like, okay, she's gonna go back to her planet and try to run away from him. And so instead of these characters getting together right away and having it be happily ever after, you know... Brad had to go to her planet and track her down and try to help her. And slowly through that, after many trials and tribulations later, eventually they get together for good. Um, But yeah, whenever things get kind of boring and complacent, you know, shake things up. Challenge your characters to grow a little bit. And yeah, that is a good way to keep the RP interesting, even if you don't necessarily know where your plot is going. Just kind of work with your characters, because that's the most fun part about RPing. Um, I think one specific question from uh, the person who asked was, like, how much detail to your world do you need? And the answer is, it really depends. Because like I said, you don't have a specific, like, plot structure to an RP. It can meander around quite a bit. So I would say go with whatever will play off your characters um, in the most fun way. Um, so if you want, like, a really in-depth, I don't know, magic system or really in-depth culture for your characters to, like, live in um, or, like, a, a city to live in and you really want to plan it out and it'll really help push your characters to grow and to do things, um, then flesh it out as much as you want. But if um, you'll get the same effect from your characters just kind of making magic do whatever you need it to do, then and you're still having fun, then that is totally fine. You don't need any hard rules. Yeah, and always talk to your partner um, and just communicate if you're if you're bored or if you want to change things, um, check in with each other so that you're not just avoiding each other because you feel guilty because you're not replying because you're not engaged with the story. Just talk to them and figure it out. Figure out ways to make it fun for you again. So yeah, <laughs> I hope this has helped inspire some of y'all to RP and do that collaborative story building because it is really fun. It is a really cool way to, um, get story ideas and to play out story ideas without having to turn them into a novel or a comic um, and get that out creatively so that you can focus on other projects that you already have going and not start a million projects. Ooh. <laughs> um, so there you go. That is how Bones and I RP. Like, big old nerds. Um, okay, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Let me know if you have any other questions about RPing that hopefully we can answer soon. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!